Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank God for another opportunity for Wednesday night Bible study. Thank God for his word. Thank God for you. I always like to quote the scripture from the book of Psalms. This is a day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I thank you for being a part of this Bible study. Um, with today being Wednesday and this coming Sunday being Resurrection Sunday. That's what I'm going to talk about a little bit tonight. Praise God. And you know, when you think about uh, Resurrection Sunday, without the resurrection of Jesus Christ, where would we be as Christian men, women, boys, and girls? Because it's the resurrection that is central to our faith walk. The resurrection. Without the resurrection, there's no life. Without the resurrection, there's no peace. Without the resurrection, there's no joy. And so I just want to talk a little bit about the importance of the resurrection. Father, we thank you for this privilege, this opportunity that you've given to be able to share your word. And Lord, I thank you in advance for the impact that your word is going to have in and on our lives. Father, I ask even right now that you would touch hearts and minds of all and prepare them to receive from you. Prepare them, Lord, to have their spirits open, Lord God, that they might grab your word in such a way, Lord God, that it will change the way that they see you, Lord God. Change the way, Lord God, that they are, Lord God. Lord, it will change. It will impact their minds, their hearts, their spirits, their souls, their bodies, their lives. And for that, I want to say thank you. It's in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Praise God again. We're talking about uh, Resurrection Sunday. And so if I was to start this off, uh, especially if it was actually Resurrection Sunday, the first thing that I would say is happy Resurrection Sunday. Uh, and you say, why? I say, praise the Lord, because Jesus is not in the grave. Glory to God. You know, a uh, certain time of year, uh, a certain time of year, uh, people go and visit tombs, mausoleums, or grave sites and all those different things to honor uh, a God, small g. We, on this particular day, have the opportunity to celebrate an empty tomb, an empty grave. And so that's what I want to talk about a little bit uh, this evening. And again, I say, without the resurrection of Jesus, we don't have a relationship with God the Father, because it was through his son that we have a relationship now with the Father. The resurrection of Christ was proclaimed by the early church. This miracle, miracle excuse me, was considered and part of the gospel message. It says, surely Christ had died, but most importantly, he had risen. Yes, a lot of times, I think a lot of the emphasis was just placed on his death, but when you look at Jesus, praise God, Jesus the Christ, we have to talk about the death of the burial, and then the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because yes, he died, but then it speaks about even how uh, prophetically it's spoken about how he would be put in a borrowed tomb, and the tomb of a, a rich man. And, and then to go on and to speak about uh, in three days that he would raise from the dead. And that's the, the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ. So that's why it's important to speak about the death, which was uh, his uh, crucifixion. And then you talk about uh, him raising from the dead, and, and, and that's his resurrection, praise God. And so um, when I look at this, it makes him more than, um, I want to say it this way, it makes him more than a suffering Savior. It makes him, praise God, Jesus, the living Lord. Yes, he suffered. Uh, he died on the cross. He excruciating pain. Uh, misery, discomfort, the whole nine yards. However, in the end, what we have, what you and I have, uh, especially those of us that have recognized Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, what we have is a risen Savior. Praise God. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 14, 15, 16, it says, and if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith is also empty. 
Yes, and we have found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ whom he did not raise up, if in fact the dead do not rise. For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. I read that because as, as Paul was, was talking to the people, Paul was putting emphasis on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And he went on to say that, and I, and I repeat, 15, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 14, if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith is also empty. In other words, even as I am sharing with you, if there was no uh, physical bodily, uh, excuse me, resurrection of Jesus, then what I am sharing with you right now is empty and what you would be believing would also be empty. However, we know better because we know that, uh, praise God, the tomb was in fact empty. Praise God. And so, uh, again, the scripture here says, and, and, uh, if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. See, even for you and I, we look forward to uh, a resurrection, praise God, to be resurrected in a new body, praise God. And so the scripture also goes on to say that if Christ is not risen, then there's no possibility of us experiencing uh, a resurrection as well. Um, I want to talk a little bit because I look at it and I say, happy resurrection Sunday. Unfortunately, and I'm going to say it just like this, unfortunately, um, it's called Easter Sunday. And it's something that has has happened, and uh, it's taken away from uh, actually the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And and when I I, I look, the word Easter is not scriptural, um, and it does not exist in true translation uh, of the Bible. Now, I want to read something here. A little note it says most Christians are unaware that Easter is a pagan festival. Uh, merge with Christianity. Easter is not a Christian holiday. And what you have to understand is, is that uh, Easter was kind of inserted in there um, to, uh, to, to, to bring this pagan uh, 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 kind of culture into, uh, oh, I should say, mix it with Christianity. Now, when you go back and you actually look up Praise God. Um, Easter, it, it, it originated from a pagan uh, goddess and, and is actually a uh, German tradition. And, now it, and, and it celebrates the spring. Um, when you look at even how uh, the Resurrection Sunday slash Easter is actually uh, on the calendar, every year it's different on the calendar. And I was looking at some things as it related to that. And uh, first of all, number one, when we look at it, the date changed because it's based on a pagan solar calendar. Easter occurs on the Sunday after the first full moon occurring after the spring equinox. Now this year, the spring equinox was on March 19th. The first full moon after the equinox is April 17th, and the first Sunday after the full moon is April 12th, which is the date of Easter this year. And so all of those uh, those dates and the reason why it's celebrated the way it's celebrated is based on a, uh, a solar, a pagan solar calendar. And it has everything to do with the moon, the earth rotation as it as the earth lines up with the equator is just, and, and, and that's how we get uh, the term or the date Easter. However, because of uh, the Christianity and this uh, pagan goddess, which her name was actually Estra, uh, was merged in together. So we have Easter and they use Easter as the day that Christ rose from the dead and they look at it from a kind of spring festival and all those different things. But I want to bring the separation, excuse me, I want to divide the, the pagan part 
and begin to just deal with it from uh, a Christian perspective. And from a Christian perspective, it should be, in fact, called the, the Resurrection Sunday if we're going to celebrate it. And so when I see the Resurrection Sunday, I'm talking about Jesus uh, actually raising from the dead. No resurrection, no hope. No hope, no life. John 11, 25, 26, Jesus said to her, and he was talking to Martha. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? In other words, what Jesus was saying is that he, in fact, was the true resurrection and the life. So in other words, it's because of our relationship with Jesus Christ is because of his bodily resurrection, praise God, that we can look and we can have a sure hope in these bodies actually being resurrected as well. Matthew 28, I'm, I'm sorry. So when I, I, and I said Matthew 28, but Jesus is in fact alive. And, and that's pretty, pretty, pretty special. When I say Jesus is alive, Think about the account, and now I'll speak about Matthews. Matthews 28, 1 through 8, Mark 16, 1 through 8, Luke 24, 1 through 11, John 21 through 10, they wrote about uh, the empty tomb. And uh, when you look at that, praise God, you're talking about uh, a tomb that was empty, a tomb that beyond any doubt, was where Jesus was buried. And when the women went there at the first day of the week, um, praise God, um, he was gone. And so when you look at it from that perspective, again, we're talking about a risen Savior. And that's why uh, I can say happy Resurrection Sunday, because praise God, Jesus is no longer in the grave. Glory to God. Is that all right? Now, Matthew 28, verses 1 through 8, is the account that I'm uh, talking from right now. It's, it was after the Sabbath, and the Sabbath ended at sundown on Saturday. And when you look at this, that means that event took place at that dawn of the morning when they went to the tomb was the first of the week, which was Sunday. And so even when you look at Sunday, and originally when you talked about the Sabbath, uh, the Sabbath uh, was the Saturday, and the Sabbath was the worship day, and uh, with Christianity and, you know, they changed and they, they, because that was the day that Jesus actually rose from the dead, which is the first day of the week is why uh, most uh, Christians now uh, come to church and worship on Sundays, praise God. Um, Matthew 28 and 2 says, an earthquake marked the death of the Lord Jesus and uh, an earthquake also marked his resurrection, which is really, really so awesome. And when you look at the scripture, when you have opportunity, praise God, uh, just because of time on my end, when you have opportunity, read Matthews 28 verses 1 through 8. Now, the thing that I want you to understand is, is that when those women came, praise God, and it was an earthquake, and uh, there was an angel that was there, glory to God, and the stone uh, was removed from the front of the tomb, and uh, they were able to, to go in and actually know and see that Jesus was not in the tomb. The thing that I like most is that actually, as the angel spoke to them, the angel said to them that I know who you seek. And I paraphrase, I know who you're seeking. You're seeking Jesus who was crucified. He is not here for he has risen as he said that he would. And then he shared with them the goal, in fact, to tell the disciples that Jesus would meet them in Galilee. Praise God. And so when you look at that, um, and, and the tomb uh, stone was rolled away from the front of the tomb, I want to back up just a little bit. First of all, the stone in it of itself was rolled up against the tomb, and then it was actually sealed, and then there were gods that were placed in front of the tomb. Praise God. Now, and think about it that way. And then the angel came down. Praise God. The earthquake occurred. Okay. The stone was rolled away. 
And now the women were able to go in. And even in John chapter 12, praise God, it speaks about how Simon Peter went inside. And then later on, uh, praise God, then John went inside. And so um, now we're talking about the fact that people are able to go inside of this particular tomb that they know that Jesus was actually buried in. And they go in and he is not there. Praise God. And why is he not there? Because he has risen as he said that he would. The thing that I like most about the fact that the stone was rolled away from the front of the tomb. It was not rolled away so Jesus could, could come out. It was rolled away so people could actually go in and look and see that he, in fact, was no longer in the tomb. Now, what's so uh, uh, good about that is when we, and I'm still uh, uh, speaking about the account as it relates in, in Matthew chapter 11, now around verses, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 28, now around verses 11 through 15, um, the gods, praise God, when that earthquake occurred, it, it say they, they shook with fear and they were like dead men. I mean, just imagine something like that happened. They were actually stopped in their tracks. It was like that kind of fear. You, you understand what I'm saying? And so they went on and they reported this to um, the religious leaders, the scribes, the Pharisees, and the elders and all of them. And they uh, came up with a plan. And their plan was to uh, pay these uh, men, the gods who were actually at the tomb, to say that while they were sleeping, his disciples came and stole the body. Now, I want to say this to you. During that particular time period when Jesus was actually taken, it speaks about how the disciples, they all scattered. These men were fearful. There's no way that they would have went back to approach those gods. And, and those gods, even in, in it of themselves, these were professional soldiers. And these were soldiers who knew that they actually could be put to death for losing a, a, a prisoner, a person, and that, that's what it amounts to. In other words, they were uh, put there to guard the body of Jesus Christ to ensure that no one stole the body. And here they are right now accepting uh, bribes to say that, in fact, someone stole the body while they were sleeping. They could have been put to death for even sleeping on the job. Now, I could understand one or two sleeping and they maybe were rotating so someone was always on guard, but not everyone to go to sleep at the same time. And so it's just so many, many different things, so many different stories. And they say even to this day, that story is still being told. But I beg the difference. Jesus, praise God, rose from the dead. And so those soldiers, praise God, took large sums of money, each one of them. And that's what they told everybody that in fact, the disciples came and stole the body. Now, the biggest thing was, was how would they be protected in the event that that word got back to the governor who was in fact their boss. And uh, the Jewish leaders even promised them that they would take care of that. Praise God. And so when you look at the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ, it is so important to your faith. It's so important to my faith. Because I say again, if Jesus, in fact, did not raise from the dead, then we have nothing, absolutely positively nothing to hold on to. I have nothing to preach to you. I have nothing to teach to you. I have nothing to share. Because as I read very, very early on, when we begun this particular lesson, and uh it was actually from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 14 through 16, that if in fact Christ is not risen from the dead, then our, our preaching is in vain, our teaching is in vain, and most of all, our faith would in fact be in vain. But thank God that in fact is not the case. Glory to God. And the thing about it is a lot of times when you look at... Uh, uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, so many times 
people, even people today, praise God, and they sometimes call themselves Christians, will say, well, ah, this, this resurrection thing, I'm not sure. But I want to tell you something. If you don't believe in the resurrection, it's like believing in the virgin birth. If you don't believe in the virgin birth, if you don't believe in the resurrection, then how can you have a resurrected Savior? How can you actually believe that Jesus, in fact, is your Lord and your Savior? You can't because if he... Uh, was crucified on that cross, as the scripture indeed says that he was. He was put in a tomb, a borrowed tomb, praise God. If that in fact happened, and then he was not raised from the dead, then how can he in fact be your Lord, be your Savior? Praise God. So the thing that I want to talk about now is, think about going into a court of law. Even in the Jewish time, they, they always required at least two witnesses. When I go back and I look at the account uh, with Jesus, the different people that he appeared to after his death um, just helps to shore my faith. And I pray as I share uh, a, a few of these particular appearances of Jesus to others that it will actually help to shore up your faith as well. You know, starting with the two Marys, that particular uh, Sunday morning when he rose from the dead, he actually appeared to to them, praise God, to let them know that he, in fact, was alive. A little bit later on, praise God, he appeared to two men as they were walking on the road to Amaris. And that Amaris was like about six, seven miles outside of Jerusalem. All these particular accounts happened either in Jerusalem or close to Jerusalem. And so here he is, praise God, after his bodily resurrection, he begins to appear. He begins to show himself to different people. And like I say, it started with the two Marys, praise God, and then the two men on the road to uh, Amaris. Uh, later, he appeared to the disciples, which when you look at that is just so, so very special. Um, and he appeared to them, praise God, to let them know that he, in fact, was and is alive. And to this day, he is alive because you read nowhere where there's another account that Jesus had to die. Glory to God. And so the mere fact that we're looking at the scripture is the scripture is revealing to us about Jesus, about after his death, his burial, his resurrection, and now him appearing to different people. There's an account that I want to look at uh, as, as Paul was sharing, and it actually comes from uh, 1 Corinthians, glory to God, yeah, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Uh, I want to begin reading at, uh, I'll begin reading at verse number three. It says, for I deliver to you, first of all, that which I also received that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen by Cephas, then by the twelve. After that, he was seen by over 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain to the present, but some have fallen asleep. After that, he was seen by James, then by all the apostles, then last of all, he was seen by me, also as by one born out of due time. Now, my goodness gracious, you only talk about today in the court of law, you can come in with one witness and someone can be convicted. Here we have Jesus uh, appearing, showing himself to all these different people. And just imagine that one gathering where over 500 people witness him at this particular time. And Paul uh, even went on to say that if someone had asked him at that particular time when this was written, most of those people were still alive. He says some had fallen asleep, which means that some were dead. However, he was saying that some, most of these people were still alive and praise God, they could uh, 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 be a, a living witness to the fact that Jesus was in fact alive, that Jesus had in, in fact appeared to them. 
So when I look at the importance of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, when I look at uh, what people call Easter, praise God, no, not Easter, happy resurrection Sunday. Glory to God, because this is a time, this is an opportunity, praise God, to have our faith shored up, to be strengthened, to be build up. See, I don't know about you, but I need to get stronger every day in my walk of faith. And the only way to get stronger every day in my walk of faith is to have the word encourage me, the word to give me something else to praise God, to hold on to. And as I look at uh, the account again, and I say, you can read about the resurrection of Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 8, verses 1 through 8. Mark chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. Luke chapter 24, 1 through 11. John chapter 20, verses 1 through 10. And when you read it, praise God, it will begin to show up your faith. When you look at, praise God, the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you just go, my God, thank you. And you know, praise God, that not was he just a, a suffering savior, but he in fact is a living, he's alive, he's the Lord of Lords, he's the King of Kings, he's the great I am, he's the Alpha, he's the Omega, he's the beginning, he's the end, he's the first, he's the last, he is God Almighty, he is God with us, praise God. And that's why the resurrection of Jesus Christ is so important to your faith, so important to my faith. And then as we go on, praise God, and knowing that that particular tomb was empty, people were able to go inside and understand that he was no longer in the tomb, to know that the stone was rolled away, not so that he could get out, but so people could go in. Once the people went in, praise God, and then Jesus began to appear to them. Jesus began to let them see that he, in fact, had risen from the dead, Praise God. Death had no hold over him. Glory to God. He is, in fact, the risen Savior. And as he showed himself to the two women, as he showed himself to the two men on the road to Emmaus, as he showed himself to different people, and the one thing, when he showed himself to over 500 brethren at once, if that doesn't show up your faith, I don't know what will Praise God, because people will tell you that I'm not sure about this. I'm not sure about that. When you can have that many witnesses, glory to God, in one place to verify that he, in fact, had risen from the dead, all you can say is glory to God. Hallelujah. You understand what I'm saying? That's how important it is to recognize that Jesus, and he said in his word in John Chapter 11, uh, verses 25 through 25, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, there's going to be a physical death. But the spiritual death, because of our relationship with Jesus Christ, we live forever. And I think that's a problem that so many, many people have. They think that once they lay down this old physical body, that that's it. No, it's not it. The one thing about it, one sure thing, in, in the end, this spirit is going to live somewhere through all eternity. If you have, in fact, recognized Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, praise God, then your spirit will live throughout all eternity with Almighty God. If, in fact, you have not and will not accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, that spirit will be in hell. That spirit will be tormented, praise God, throughout all eternity. And so today... I can say as we near this coming Sunday, happy Resurrection Sunday. That's what it has to be. That's what you got to begin to look forward to. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. 
We thank you for the life, the peace, the joy that comes from your word. We thank you most of all for Jesus. Jesus, we thank you for your life-saving blood. Jesus, we thank you for your obedience, even the death of the cross. Jesus, we want to say thank you, and we recognize you today as our risen Savior. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Maybe today you've not recognized Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Maybe today it took understanding and recognizing the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ for you to say, what must I do to come to know the saving grace of Jesus? And I'll tell you how you do that. Today, the scripture in, in the book of Romans, it speaks about confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart that Jesus died, glory to God, raised from the dead, and he now sits at the right hand of the Father. And so if you would like to have Jesus to come into your heart, I ask that you repeat this prayer of faith with me. Say, Father God, I recognize, I believe that Jesus died for the sins of the world. I believe that Jesus died for my sins. Father, forgive me of my sins. Jesus, come into my heart. Live in me and through me for the glory of God. Jesus, I accept you today as my personal Lord and Savior. Father, thank you for receiving me into your family. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Welcome to the family of God. The scripture says that the angels in heaven are rejoicing over your conversion today. Get a Bible, begin reading St. John chapter 1 and allow the Spirit of God to minister to you. Most of all, find that Bible-believing, teaching church and come in and become an active member in the family of God. And now until we have opportunity to meet again, I ask the Lord's blessings on you and your family. May the Lord keep you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.